Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Day three of Open House. Uh, I hope you guys have learned so much uh, the past two days. I know I have. Um, and uh, today we have Dane with us again. Uh, good morning, Dane. Hey, good morning. Uh, excited about this. Uh, Affinity, not a program I know a lot about, but I know that it has been gaining a lot in popularity. So yes. uh, with that, I'm just going to let you uh, take it away. All right. Sounds good. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. We um, Affinity Photo is uh, uh, one of the premier programs coming out. I it, well, I'm, I'm looking for my screen here. What's going on? Am I, did we share? Mm. Uh oh, having a technical difficulty. Looks like my. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. What is going on? How about this? Is that better? There we go. There we go. What okay. was all that? I went to space. Who knew? <laughs> all right. So affinity. <clears throat> Photo is a killer program, right? It's it mimics Photoshop in so many ways. Uh, that that's why if you are a Photoshop user, um, you can get around in it pretty good, pretty quick. Um, it is not Photoshop, by the way. Uh, it is great, uh, but not nearly as great as Photoshop. And you, you'll see some of those things as I go through this class today. So if any of you took my class yesterday, we did the same design, right? We're gonna what we're doing is we're gonna create a Tumblr design out of this image. Well, pieces and parts of this image. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I looked at this and I guesstimated I wanted about a four inch wide main image. And then we're going to have some texture stuff wrap around it. So that's kind of what you need to do to, you know, to think and to get going. Um, and before I do, I wanted to show you guys this, right? So I do have training books for all kinds of decorating techniques, white toner, which you can get at Condi. Um, DTG printing, vinyl cutting, that sort of thing. Uh, and we're about a month, maybe month and a half away with printing to for my dye sublimation Photoshop edition. As soon as that one's done, there will be an Affinity Photo edition. So we're already working on it, uh, just so you know. So, um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take pieces and parts from this image here. And what are we going to do? We're going to create this. That's going to be our Tumblr art, right? And we're going to do it in such a way where these things don't overlap, right? We're going to remove part of this bat so this bat fits. It's just going to kind of fold in and fit in like that as you wrap it. When You, cut, you have to cut your paper a little crazy, um, but that's all you got to do. So uh, what I did was if you see here, here's all my layers to build this image, right? Tuck them all in a folder. We're going to turn that off, and I'm just going to kind of turn on the uh, template, which I got um, right from Condi's website. Found the, tum the Tumblr that we had and went and downloaded it. Here's our uh, a PNG of that that particular uh, template. So I just put a white background underneath, and um, you know we'll bring that part back up when I need it. So uh, let's get busy. So I'm going to go here now. What I'm going to do is I want to pull these pumpkins and I want to pull this witch, and then we'll come back and we'll get some of these bats and just put the bats. So all the elements in our other design, except the type, obviously, are uh, coming from this particular image. And I like to show this type of thing because, you know, say this is a stock art piece, like one of the Great Dane ones. And if you get it, you're not stuck with it like this. You don't always have to use it just like you see it. You can pull any piece of these things out if you know how. And that's what I like to show, right? So you can utilize one piece of artwork, you know, multiple, multiple times and get totally different looks and things like that. So. Uh, that's the reason for this class. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to start off with some uh, selection techniques. And they're basically the same ones I use with Photoshop. If you look over here on my left-hand side, I'm going to mouse over this. It should give me a name. That is a selection brush tool, right? That is similar to Photoshop's quick selection tool. And um, honestly, it's this one is better, I think, in um, the way it functions than Photoshop's. A little bit better. Uh, here's a magic wand or tragic wand. I don't use that much at all especially in here it's 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 a terrible uh selection tool anyway um and it's kind of even more terrible in here i just don't use it uh, but this is one i call the lasso tool because if you look at that icon there that's photoshop's lasso tool icon and i've been using photoshop since version two 
uh, so early 90s. And it's, you know, uh, it's a freehand selection tool, though. So if you wanted to, a marquee, if you click and hold, you got rectangles and, you know, ellipticals and things like that. So it's just here in that list. Um, one other thing, I will be bouncing back and forth on my Cintiq here with my Wacom pen and my uh, handy Apple brick, right? So, uh, and what I want to do, a couple things. I want to show you how the the uh, selection brush works. So let's do that. I'm kind of zoom in to this area. I'm holding my space bar. It gives me my grabber hand, right? Uh, I want to just select my layer there and make my brush the large right bracket key will enlarge the brush size and your left bracket key will decrease the brush size. And with this, you don't have to hold the keyboard. I'm not holding down anything like a shift key or anything because the tool, right, it just adds to your selection, right? You just click and drag out. Now, right here, if you notice, we kind of overshot it. So if we hold the option key or the alt key on your PC and you can come back in and sort of take that out like that, right? Uh, so just keep going around. Just trying to get all these guys. And, you know, you want to... Once we, once I think I got it all, we're going to take a look and really kind of verify it, right? So I'm missing the outside here. I'm going to kind of grab that. We overshot this piece. I can kind of take this out. Now, I'm not too worried about anything like that, little bits and pieces. I can always clean it up uh, in the other file because it's going to be an empty file. So you'll be able to see things a whole lot easier. But you do want to try to get capture everything and at least the first go around, right? Get the edge of that. All right. So right here we don't have the finish the rest of this little stem, right? So as soon as I drag that out, obviously grab some more. So I'm not going to be able to uh, use my option key and get rid of that necessarily as good. Huh? I actually did. Wow. Who knew? So I'm going to reduce my brush key and I'm going to hold my option key in here and I'm going to kind of get rid of this little space. And you notice it dropped this little part out and you just click on it and pull it in. So that looks pretty good. I'm just kind of looking around, looking for a little bitty extra pixels. Sometimes it'll have like one little pixel in the middle of the image someplace and uh, you don't notice it. So that looks pretty good. So if I copy, I can go to edit up here, right? Go to edit copy or just hit command or control C on your PC. Uh, now I'm going to go to my image here. I'm going to paste it. And there we go. So it's kind of pasting in place already. Let's go back over here, deselect this. Let's go ahead and get our little witch. Now, what I wanted to show you is um, same thing, right? So the same tool works to capture th this. Uh, problem is, and I'm going to do just her head for a second because I want to show you uh, that. And I'll show you another selection tool that, that I like better. And if you saw my class yesterday, you know what that is. And that's my pen tool, right? My path tool. Um, and... I do want to show that because Affinity Photo is a little bit wonky when it comes to working with paths. They call them curves. No big deal, right? I know uh, uh, Corel calls them curves too. So, I mean, it's not a, it ain't the verbiage I'm worried about. It's the way it operates. So there is no, in Photoshop, for instance, and I'm just holding my option key, by the way, to remove these pieces. We're just going to get the hat here. For now so holding the option key i'll kind of clean this piece up right there um and do this uh the curves seem to they disappear on you right photoshop i have a path and i have a paths panel so i can create all my paths and they stay there forever that's why i like the path i can create a path around this and i can use it so let's go ahead and i'm just going to copy this i'm going to bring it into my image right and we'll paste it down uh, and I just want to kind of zoom in and show you. It's a pretty decent job, right? It looks like we got a little bit extra stuff here. And then, you know, this is, can get kind of cleaned up. So that's one way to do it. Now we're super mega zoomed in. So it looks pretty good. It, it's actually better than Photoshop's uh, quick selection tool, right? That's where I think that this tool works better. Uh, so I'm going to delete that for a minute. But what I want to do is I want to show you how to create a path and what you need to do so they don't disappear. They disappear. It's so weird. Bizarro land. I mean, you spend all kind of time on it. Say I can spend 15 minutes on it and it can go away. So if I come to my pen tool, 
Uh, and if you see here, I actually have it done already um, right there, right? So my witch here, you'll see I can make a selection right now and we can bring it in because I already cut the path. So what I want to do is I'm just going to show you how the path uh, or the pen tool works. And then we're going to come back and we're going to utilize this one that's already finished or so save some time. Um, the, but I do want you to see, though, if you see it down here, there's another one, right? And it's locked. And it's locked because I locked it. <laughs> this thing, uh, well, you'll see. Let's just got my pen tool, right? And we got working on there. Let's just, I'm just going to do the hat again just to save us some time so we can get through the whole thing. So I'm going to click, <clears throat> put a node there, and I'm going to move it. And I'm going to pull my Bezier handles out, and that's just going to kind of reshape things. So when I want to move this, so if, if this is not good enough drawn for me, I can hold my command key, your control key in your PC, and you can move that node, right? So I can kind of move it, hold it down again, and I can adjust it, right? That kind of thing. I can click inside this node. No hold and no keys, just click. And then now I can reach, I can change the direction of the pen, which is really important. You'll find yourself doing it all, a lot, right? So I'm going to do like that. That one worked out fairly decent. I'll click here and pull it out this way. So if you notice, I kind of went too far up. So I'm not going to get a good enough, you know, turn. It's not a big deal if you just click inside there. That node goes inside, that Bezier handle goes back inside the node. So what will happen is uh, I can reshape and redo it. So do it, click on it again and just sort of click around. Uh, now, what I did when I did my one in Photoshop, and Photoshop works the same way, actually. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. So we came into this node in a, as, in a curve, right? And it wants to come out of that node in a curve. Um, that's just the, the way all these things work, right, in Photoshop and in here. You see that Bezier handle is kind of sitting way out here. If I just click on this node, that handle goes in. Now I can change directions and it'll come straight from that node in any point or any direction I want to go, right? Just shoots it in that uh, like I want. So I find myself doing it not every time, but most of the time because I can click here and I can reshape my drawing, right? I can just get a more accurate uh, path doing it this way watch if i don't and i come here see what happens it's it's that bezier handle anytime you see that handle point way outside that node that means it's going to want to make a big loop right it wants to make a big loop because we made this big loop coming in so i'm going to command c or control z that one i'm going to just click on my node here make it go away and i can draw it out you see what i'm saying you can control everything by losing that end bezier handle so uh You'll get used to messing messing with that the more you do. Um, but this program is really strong program. I mean, for the price, it's fifty dollars, and they always have like fifty percent sales, man. So you can get it for twenty five bucks. Uh, you you cannot beat this. This is a killer program for that. It is so much like Photoshop. Now you know, notice over here, these are all transparent pixels, right? So I can't. Whoops. I can just go ahead and move these things around. Um, and not, I'm not worried about tracing necessarily the, the artwork there because it's not against anything. All the, the, the gray and white checkers you see, they're just transparency. So now I can, I'm just going to kind of come in here and, and do like this. We'll just sort of finish this out quick. Now you see, I should have... <laughs> I should have uh, adjusted that node a little bit better, right? So holding my command key or your control key, you can do that. You can just sort of go back in and reshape it if you went too far. Uh, and you can't really just click on the node, make it disappear again, right? So there we go. So make it disappear and then continue on. Click on it, and it'll go away. Now, I'm obviously going a little bit fast here just because there's so much more we got to do here. I just want to show you. I want to I grab most of it, though, uh, so you can see what's going to happen to it. When you do take your time and do these paths, um, 
you can save it in Photoshop. It's in your past pal. Just give it a name and it'll be there for as long as until you delete it. And in here, it's not going to stay. But you, if you duplicate it, like I did, and you'll see that, you know, like you see the two layers in here, um, then it'll stay. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to name it hat, right? And just because I wanted to know what we're dealing with. So if I do this, there it is. My pen tool is selected. I'm looking at her hat and I see the hat. So let's go ahead and do this. At this point, if I want to make a selection of that hat, what I'm going to do is come up here. As long as my pen tool is selected and I'm on the curve, I can come up to the top and see where it says selection. If I click it, it selects that hat. So now again, I can go to edit copy, right? I can take it to our working file and I go to edit paste. And there it is. Awesome. Cool thing about pens, they super clean, right? You take your time on it uh, and it's always there. It's super, It's the best hard edge selection you can do. I use them all the time, almost exclusively, unless I'm pulling a Jaguar out of a jungle scene or something like a lot of things going on. And that's why Photoshop's, I think their edges are a little fuzzy and a little different. So I'm going to just command Z. I'm going to delete this. We don't, we're not going to use that one. I wanted to come here just to show you how the tool worked. And now I want you to look at my layers panel. Do you see the curve that we just made? So if I deselect this, right, if I come over here and I click off of it, or Control D is, or Command D is the same as deselect as Photoshop, um, we made that thing and it's it's gone. Poof. What? So when you create it, right, as soon as you finish it, like uh, I'm going to click on my tool here so I can see it. So that is the path that I did when I did my witch. And all, if you right click inside here and just hit duplicate, it's going to give you two versions. And um, I'm going to right click. I'm going to lock it so I don't accidentally do anything with it. And I can just turn it off and I can just tuck it away underneath something. So I always have it. This is the goofy stuff that, you know, you're going to find in Affinity, right? Affinity is a fantastic program, but these are the wonky things. I don't even know, I don't even know how, to get, how else to describe it. Like it has, you know, all these panels. And if you wanted to know what your panels list, like if, for instance, if your layers weren't, were not up on your screen here, you got to go to view menu here and come down to studio. And then this is where all your panels are, right? So you can, you know, pull up your layers or your channels or whatever you're dealing with. Um, in Photoshop, it would just be underneath this window menu. Everything you see under the window menu in Photoshop is where your panels are. Affinity Photo, you got to go to View, Studio, and here's where they are. So there is no paths. There is no pen list. There is no panel to hold all your paths, right, or your curves. Uh, so that's a one big bummer for me, but it's a workaround, and that's the workaround. So it's not the worst thing in the world. So let's go ahead and select um, the switch. You got to click on your pen tool here and then hit the selection tool and we'll copy it. And then we'll bring her back in here. All right. So a little command or control zero, just like Photoshop will make everything fit the page. Uh, so that's what, see what we're dealing with. Um, this is a 11 by 17 document. If you can see these blue lines here, those are my guides, right? So if I go to view, I can show guides. So basically, this is my four inch window, right? So half of it, uh, 17 is uh, eight and a half. And I just went over two inches this way and then two inches that way to give me my four inches to fit on my tumbler, right? <clears throat> so uh, that's just my guide rules to know how big I need to make these things, basically. So I'm going to put it there. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and hide these because I, I know that's where it needs to be. Um, now if you notice, well, I'm not sure if we're going to have to fix this because this is a little piece that came out of, uh, from the other art piece and this blue line here. I'm not worried about that, but we might be able to hide. Yeah, we'll hide them both. One thing we do need to do is fix this hand because there's a ghost hand. It's got two fingers in her hair. So I'll show you how we'll fix that. So we just kind of position it here, double click it for a minute. Um, let's go back to her and zoom in. So. You see this here? We need to kind of hide this part of it. And this is a high res file. Now, that's one more thing about Affinity Photo is the this is a high res file, same resolution as my my template. And but we're zoomed in, and I don't know it doesn't does it tell me a percentage? No. 
I'm looking for like how like 300% zoomed in or something. It, it uh, doesn't tell me on the screen here. So um, anyway, it doesn't print this bad. So just know that. But in, but right now, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, I'm going to hit my B key. This gives me my brush tool. Um, and if you notice the up at right hand corner, that's the color that I'm dealing with. If I hold my option key, I can click inside the image and it chooses a color. See, now it's not black. It's that brownish color on the outside edge. Now, I can draw, uh, if I go back up over here, <laughs> if I, I can draw on this thing like that, right, which is cool. Um, and if you, if anybody's familiar with, um, like, Procreate, and you can set your brushes, and they, like, if I do a stroke, it will smooth it out for me. And I can control it better. Um, for something like this, if you wanted to do that, just to show you this little stabilizer checkbox, it kind of does it in uh in here right i don't use this every day um but you can kind of get an idea like that you can just sort of play with it i think it's a little bit weird but just to show you that it was there so i'm just gonna draw it in i'm gonna hit my e key for my eraser tool i'm gonna make left bracket key is gonna make my um my brush a little bit smaller and i'll do that um, hit my B key to get back to my brush. I'm going to hold my option key and click here. That's the color I want to paint with now. And I'm just going to kind of paint this out. All right. I'll do this. Um, option key, click on this darker brown color, orangey brown, I guess, whatever. And I'm just going to kind of get rid of all this part. And I am using a Cintiq from Wacom on screen here in my pen, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can do this with a simple Wacom bamboo if you wanted. They're like 80 bucks uh, and then get very similar um, sort of results. That works, it's good enough for me for what we're doing here, right? So let's zoom back out and do like this. Um, if I hit my V key, that gives me my move tool, which is my arrow tool so I can kind of make her larger, right? That's what we're going to do here. I want to, maybe not all the way. We'll find out in a bit. So you see, I must have moved something. I moved my background. Yeah. So I can lock that away if I want. Uh, lock it so I can't move it, right? All right, so let's, yeah, I must have, yep, started drawing on that. So I'm going to kind of, is that on this? Yeah. So if I get my B, my brush, and I just go ahead and uh, pull my option key, click on that white, right? And I'll get rid of this. That's what happened when I was working on the wrong layer a second ago. All right. So um, we're getting there. Um, I want to take her. Well, one more thing that I would normally fix is this little part here on her leg as well, right? So select her, um, hit my B key to get me my brush tool, make my brush smaller, put my option key, click here, and then just paint it out to fix, All right? Good enough. Um, all right, so we're just gonna tuck her behind these pumpkins now. All right, and you won't see that little blue stripe because it's not necessary. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and just, I got to hide these guys. These guys drive me crazy, right? But I can kind of just, I know my pumpkins are pretty much, you know, the edges of this already are kind of where I'm going. And we still may make them bigger yet, uh, her anyway. So let's go ahead and get some type in here, right? So click on my type. I click here, Cutlass uh, Regular. That is the font that I'm using. I got it from dafont.com. No big deal. Uh, who don't want to start with it, this word with a B. Just saying. Uh which is brew, right? And we'll come here and just kind of, I don't know, pull it up a little. And all right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to kind of bring it up here a little bit. See, we can't make her a little larger there and hide that foot. Just don't want to have to come back and fix that part. So we'll hide it. All right, so I'm going to take this. <clears throat> now in Photoshop, there's an enveloping tool, right? So I can come in and just choose arch and it's going to automatically arch my type to kind of go up like that, right? Well, they don't have the enveloping tools in Affinity Photo. Uh, 
And I can't understand that because it's in almost every other program in the world, right? But um, it's not in here. So if you come down here, this little warp tool, I can click on that. Oops. Uh, my type is selected. Click and hold. I want the mesh warp tool, right? And it's kind of old school. And I say old school because way back when, before the enveloping tools were around, like the automatic enveloping, they actually had these where we can kind of do this. So I can still move and bend. And I mean, you can take it in all kinds of directions and do all kind of crazy wonky stuff. So you can get some cool effects with it, right? Um, but all I'm looking to do is just arch it. So just so you know, you want to get any kind of cool banner effects or any of that sort of thing, use that warp tool there to do it. All right. So let's add some interest to this guy here. So we need to put some color and some things. So inside, as long as that layer is selected, if I go to the bottom here, you see this little effects icon. If I click on it, <clears throat> just like Photoshop, I get these layer effects. So let me go ahead and uh, try to zoom in on this area a little bit more so we can kind of see as we build these things here in this panel, we'll see what it looks like there, right? So first thing, let's, let's do a gradient overlay. And um, what I want to do is I want to I want a linear gradient. That's cool, but I don't want this thing this direction anyway. So I'm going to make this. Let me click on this white um, little dot here, and I'm going to change it to red, right? And then red to black. That's cool. But what I want to do is just change this uh, little angle. So I'm going to go from red at the top to black at the bottom. Awesome. That's what I'm looking for. Now we'll go to outline. We'll turn it on uh, and I'm not sure that you know these things, but like yesterday, it was a little trick that we use, we as in Great Dane's team, all the time. And it's how to make multiple outline strokes using this one outline. And funny thing is, we did it in Photoshop for years now. And inside of here, it's the, they give you the same tools, man. It's almost like Photoshop, you know, just crazy. Uh, so <clears throat> what we want to do is I want to... Um, Make an outline here. So let's go to my radius. We got to kick it up so I can see an outline, right? So I can see something. Uh, and I want it to align to the outside because I want to keep the face of the font just like it is. So all the effects go on the outside of that. Um, my fill style, though, what I want to do is do a contour, right? And now look what happens. The contour is going to follow the shape of the letters, <clears throat> which is awesome. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We can always come back and make adjustments to this. So if I wanted this thing to, you know, go smooth black to white, we could do that. But that's way boring. So we're not going to do that. So this one, I'm going to change this one here to black, right? And I want to put a um, breaker point in here. So I double click inside of here and I can click on the color block here and make it white, right? And this one on the show, we want to make sure that th there's not a soft gradient in between. So I'm trying to move this point and it doesn't move at the end, right? The end points are the end points in here. It doesn't allow you to do anything, but you can grab these middle sliders and I can move the gradient um, center point, right? Like this. Problem is even when I move it all the way here, I still have a soft gradient piece there. And that's not what I'm looking for, right? I don't want that to be the case. So, um, what I'm going to do is delete that point. I'm going to add a new one. Double click, change it to white. All right, now I'm going to come here and I'm going to double click and I'll make this one black. And I'm going to work on these two and get them to come close together like that. So now they're sort of right on top of each other and I got a good hard edge, right? So um, you can see, let me make it a little bigger. I have a black to the white, but we want to make this one purple right that's cool and then i need another white point here right because i got to join the purple and the white now like just like we did the black um that looks good there double click click on here and let's do, do the purple again and then let's just sort of make these two meet just like that right so that's kind of cool. That's what I like. That's what I want to see. And I can do as many colors or as many little blocks or little points in there and just, just keep throwing them in. Now, let's do an outer shadow maybe, right? Drop shadow. Uh, let's change it. Give me a radius here. Do my offset. Kind of, there we go. Uh, let's go this direction. This is cool. You're starting from the center point 
and your shadow will follow. So you see we the shadow the the point is in the lower right. So my drop shadow is starting to come out in the lower right. Uh, now I'll just kind of, you know, play with these settings to you, you get something. But we're going to go ahead and do it this way. Um, the intensity is if I go all the way up to 100%, it's going to kind of make it solid like that on the edge. My opacity is not all the way up, so I can make it completely black. Um, that's kind of what I did in the Photoshop version. It's sort of what you might have seen uh, when I showed you it. A minute ago you know, when we started up um, but we can always you know cut the opacity down i can cut the intensity down so we wanted a soft edge um, because cool thing about dye sublimation is you can make it print with a soft edge if we want um, you can do all those things so i can you know literally uh, pick something you like right so just to be different we're going to go ahead and go with a one of these and my offset's not quite so far um, I can even change the color of it. So I wanted some sort of dark purple, right? We could do that like a, almost like a cast color in there, you know, whatever. So let's just say we like that because I think it's cool, right? So we'll close it. So now we got some interesting type in here. Zoom back out. That looks pretty cool. So now we got to get those bats um, in here. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn on my template. <laughs> now I can see I'm nowhere as near where I need to be. As far as making it fit, right? So I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead and show those guys one more time. That way I can make this fit, but just sort of kind of position it uh, where I want. So pretty good. Now my witch is too big, right? So I'm going to do like this. And what I want to do is go ahead, let's go ahead and take the type and we'll put the type behind her in the stacking order right so she kind of comes over the the type um and we can move the type up a little bit more maybe something like that um all right she's still way too big because i noticed i must have moved that's right when i moved the template it everything got sized up wrong so let's go ahead and get this up let's get these guys in position and then we can figure out where she needs to be um that looks pretty cool that works for me. All right. So here we go. Now let's get the bats. So we're going to hide these uh, guides again um, just because. All right. So looks good. Command D or Control D, right, on your PC. Deselects just like Photoshop does. Uh, let's go get these little bats. And we'll just use the magic wand tool because it's another selection tool. And I'll show you another little wonky thing. So Photoshop, any selection tool you use. If you hold the shift key, it adds to the selection. So I'm holding my shift key and I'm clicking on my new bat here and it deselected this one and selected only that one. So it will only select one thing, right? Kind of weird in my opinion. So let's just go ahead and use the uh, quick selection tool, click and drag. Um, don't even need to hold the shift key and click and drag. So now I'm going to copy, go over here, paste them. And there they are, right? Make them a little bit bigger. All right, so now I got some bats in there. Um, gonna kind of position them over somewhere right here. All right, so let's now we get what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate a whole bunch of them and make them fit. And what I'm gonna try to do probably is I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit in a minute. I'm gonna show you how we do some of these things and then I'll kind of go to my older layers uh, because I did not get to a point to something yesterday that I wanted to do to show in Photoshop. So I'll, I kind of want to show that this time. Um, I do have handouts for this, by the way, and I think Sprite put them up in the um, website thing. So if I click on my bats, I can right click and I can duplicate it, right? And so I can get another set. And I can right click inside here and I can come down to transform and I can flip it horizontal. Right? So I can kind of do that like this. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just right click and I'll duplicate it again. And I'm bringing it down here. And uh, let's go back the other direction just to wig them out a little bit. Um, and I can do one more. Let's just do that. Let's see. Uh, duplicate. And right click and flip it the other way. So even though we can kind of look at this and see that we just duplicated them four times, right? 
Um, we, we'll still mess around with some of these things here in a minute uh, to where it's not quite so noticeable, but that's still pretty good. Um, all right, so now what we can do is I can click this and select all these, right, all the bats and put them on one layer. Uh, let's see if I can do it this way. If I right click, I can come down to geometries in in here. Uh, no, that's interesting. See, these are small wonky things that should be available to me because if I click here and I right click, um, hmm, no, all right. So we're gonna do it this way. We'll hold all my bats. We'll go to layer, come down to geometry. Why can't I merge my curves? I'm selected. I'm selected. Selected. Hit this guy. Whoops. How about we start at the top, Dane? This one, this one, this one. All right? They're selected. Got my move tool. So like layer, geometry, merge curves, because it's not curves. Layer, merge layers. Duh. All right. So where is that at? Merge selected. There we go. See? My brain, two different programs work a little different. All right, so now I can uh, select that, right? I can right click it and I can duplicate it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on this line on this bat. And I'm going to hold my shift key to constrain it straight. And I'm going to bring it to this line on this side and I'm going to let go. And we're going to be able to move some of these other these bats. So so basically it's going to be like this. Like right now, let's see what, bat, what line we're on right so I'm going to, I can use my lasso tool, right? I can select this one. Let me go ahead and get a little bit better selection down there. And I can delete that one, okay? And the reason I did that is because over here, like this bat's going to fit there, right? And I can come here and um, I'd have to go to the other bat layer, deselect that one. And I can deselect, I can delete this one, right? And then this bat is going to be in position right here as it wraps around. So you just sort of go back, walk back and forth. So you, out of these two here, we got to pick one. So um, I'll go ahead and just take this one out. And same thing down there. We'll, we'll get this guy out. Whoops, wrong layer. <laughs> got to click on the right layer and make him go away. There we go. All right, so we can take both of those. I can merge those together. But what I want to do is I want to get this side, right? And we'll right click, we'll duplicate this row of bats. And I'm just going to steal them and kind of bring them in, plug and play, just kind of move them all in. So in my L key, again, I call it a lasso. Uh, Affinity calls it the freehand selection tool. So um, let's go ahead and just get this bat here. All right, so now if I hit my V key, right, that gives me my move tool, then it allows me to grab that. Hey, it would if I selected my layer. It allows me to move that one bat out of there and just kind of bring it here, right? So I'll click it there and we'll deselect it. So I just moved it. Um, Got to make sure you are on the correct layer, right? Let's get this one here. Hit my V, give me my arrow tool here, my move tool. I'm on that layer and lets me move it over here. You know, maybe want it like right there. Why not? Um, same thing. Make sure I'm on that layer. Hit my L key. Let's take this little guy. Hit my V key to get my move tool. And just sort of come over here and get my little turning thingy majiggy. And we'll just sort of do that. Uh, select it here. All right, so you get the idea, right? All we're doing is moving. I can size them different. I can rotate them different. So they look like a bunch of random bats. All right, so we got like 10 minutes left. So that's how I did the rest of them. So I'm just going to jump ahead to that. Let's turn uh, these off for now, right? And let's just sort of look at these guys here because I want to show you that where we're headed. So turn this one on. So that's the kind of our finished layout, right? All my bats are sort of in position and ready to go. I can turn off the outline there and you see how, you know, how they are. Now, 
Um, that says full bat pattern, as you can see here. So I turn that one off and turn this one on. This one is set up a little bit different, right? So if I were to turn off this preview, okay, and I print this, then this will randomly fit. If you notice, see all the, the openness here? I just did that because I think we could probably fit this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet, right? This is 11 by 17 uh, template. Um, so we printed this on a, I think an eight and a half by 11, it'll, it'll fit the whole way. Uh, and then what's going to happen is this bat's going to be finished out here. So as it wraps, it's, it's still going to fall in between. Not, you're not worried about <clears throat> like trying to seam together a bat uh, to where one wing and the other wing needs to try to meet and line up. And then you'll probably see that little line in the middle. That sort of thing uh, doesn't happen here. So uh, one of the things I do want to show in here is the at least go through here. we got five minutes. Just go through this um, texture and how I did it. Come on now. Why am I not zooming in? All right, let me do this way. Go. All right, so you see this crazy blood water looking texture? I think I kind of dig, right? So um, I'll show you how we did it. Come back into this one. You say, what do you mean? There's no blood water here. Well, you see this little smokiness? So that's the one that I grabbed, right? So again, if I, Photoshop, I would use the magic wand tool and click here, and then I'd hold my shift key, and I'd click there. And then I'd hold my shift key, and I'd click there, and it doesn't work. So you got to use the uh, quick selection tool, right? So I click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, right? Uh, and now it of course, it captured what I didn't want it to capture, which is this piece. So I just hold my option key, take it out, um, click and drag in here. And same thing, I grabbed it too far. And we'll do this part. Whoops. Yeah, so this is again one of them things that should not we shouldn't be worrying about that part of it, right? Should my tragic wand tool should work? All right, so got them all selected. I'm gonna copy. We'll take them back over here, and I'll paste, right? And it just sort of pasted there, which is all right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm not. Let's see. Let me zoom in in here. Got my eraser tool. Now, this stuff is white, right? Watch. If I come in here, I select it. Hold. If you hold, um, by the way, if you hold your command key and click on the icon here, I'm going to deselect that, right? So I'm zoomed in here. See this little picture? That's the icon of the layer. So if I hold my command key or the control key in your PC and you click it, it selects everything on that layer. So I could come in here and double click this and let's just go find me a red, right? I want a super saturated red. And if I come to my bucket tool and I, whoops, I do like that and go this way. I got to go inside of each piece. Or if I hit my B key, get my brush tool, right? And if I start painting, get my brush really, all I'm doing is try to fill in those. Because remember, if you see this, right, it, it's light blue, light blue to right there and it stops. And then it's got that little white outline. Because in the main image, it had a small little white outline around it. Well, I'm not worried about a, a white outline for what I want to do right now, right? So, um, all right. So I got this. I'm going to squeeze it down, kind of position it over here. Let me see if I turn off. Um, I turn that one off and I turn uh, this one back on, right? Turn all that stuff off. So I'm just going to kind of position it. I'm going to right click and duplicate it. Yeah. And I can do that. Then if I right click here, I can transform it and flip it. And we can kind of get this, you know, um, let's just go ahead and duplicate one more. And we can rotate it around. <laughs> so you, this is how I did it, right? So you can play around with it a little bit better and multiple times over. I'm going to select these three. And we're just going to go ahead and merge selected and position it here. Now, 
here's a weird thing. I got to come over to my, let my text stuff here. Um, and click on my font there, right? You know, command J will put us in this, into a new one. Uh, actually, you can't do it that way because it's, it's got all the effects on it. What I'm trying to do is get, I need just the face of this image of the, the text, right? So if I come here and I turn these off, right, that'll get us there. Um, do that. And I can grab my red stuff, kind of position it where I want. And so now if I, let's see, if I select my type, right? And that's just on the face of it. Um, I got my type position. I mean, my red blurry stuff position where I want. I can go to sel uh, select menu, invert, right? And then delete. And then that puts the type stuff right there. Uh, and of course, I could have put the gradient in the type itself, but there you go. So it's kind of an old school way of multiple layers to get the same effect that I could have did with just a, a cutout, uh, um, a clipping mask in Photoshop, but can't do it in here. So, uh, so there you go. Um, hopefully I'm on time. Got a minute maybe for questions. Uh, I think. Um, got a lot of questions about the handouts, uh, which I haven't uploaded this one yet. So we'll get to that one. Okay. Um, I've already given everybody your, uh, uh, website so they can go there and uh, check out all the great uh, information you have. Um, awesome. Um, where can they get Affinity Photo? So Affinity Photo, uh, I think it's uh, serif.com, S-E-R-I-F.com is their website. And it is, um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's on sale. I haven't gone there lately. And uh, you said that uh, after the die sub book, you're going to be working on an affinity book. Is that correct? Yes, I'm. Um, I'm taking the same exact lessons uh, if they work, right? Because they're like you saw today; they're a little bit different. And and affinity sometimes can't do what Photoshop does. So we if we can't find a workaround, we just take the lesson out. But it's the same thing. All the lessons are the same, just done in Photoshop in one book. That's the first one coming in a month or so, and then the next one is same exact lessons done in here affinity photo it's a great program it's worth every bit of 50 bucks and if i wasn't the guy i'm a photoshop guy i'm never getting out of it but i also teach people how to use multiple programs and this one is good enough that i want to keep teaching people how to use it because it's great yeah and i have a lot of people asking you know which is better uh corel photoshop or affinity and really it's it's kind of like pc and mac it's whichever one you know you grew up on yep yeah, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Right. The cool thing is, I will tell them this, is your Corel Draw, that is your vector program or Adobe Illustrator, right? But if you wanted an image editor, then I would tell the Corel users to get just Photoshop or Affinity Photo because once you create the artwork and do all your adjustments, it'll go back and forth right in the Corel, no problem, right? They work really good hand in hand, but it's 10 times better than a Corel Photo Paint, Photoshop is, so... They yeah. work together, right? Yeah. Um, well, I guess that's it. Uh, you had 311 people attending. Nice. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can we upload the handouts if we go back and rewatch the class? Absolutely. Um, so I want to talk about that. If you are on the web app, you can go to resources, documents. Um, and if you are on the phone app, you can actually go to the actual sessions and the handouts will be there. And I will download that as, uh, as soon as I get a second to do it. So, <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, Dane. Hey, thank you, Sprite. Thanks, everybody. Bye.